Peace, love, and light, my beautiful, beautiful Scorpios. Welcome to First Eye Visions. My name is Q, and I'm here to do the They Pray and Pray on Your Downfall series right now. So we're going to tune in, tap in, check in with the energy, see what's coming in, going out, going on with our Scorpio energy. See what's lurking in the background, what's hidden. And um, so this is going to be a deep dive. You know how I do. Um, I will you all are blissed on this Tuesday. I will everyone is feeling amazing. I will that you all are protecting your energy, your peace. I definitely um, felt encouraged to do this reading today. Um, I've been getting a lot of downloads about narcissism. So I don't know if some of you all are dealing with narcissists. Um, but I'm strongly feeling like... Um, uh, some of you all may need to to kind of like let go of that, you know, let go of that energy because that's what feeds a narcissist is, you know, their ability to keep you holding on um, and scraggling on. They have no intention on changing or healing or rectifying a situation. It's only and always about control. So if some of you all are dealing with uh, narcissists, um, you absolutely need to disconnect from that energy and the way that you do that is you just ghost you go ghost <laughs> you 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 change your numbers you you block numbers you block anybody's ability to access you or reach you on social media but if you are dealing with a narcissist the only conversation that you should be having with them is none <laughs> because they are it's a it's a mental disorder it's actually uh, mental disability, narcissism, and you dealing with that type of energy is only going to drive you crazy. Um, and I say that lightly. I'm not trying to make fun. I'm not trying to, you know, make light of it. It's truly just actual factuals. Like if you are dealing with someone who has narcissistic personality disorder um, and you are expecting them to have some empathy towards you or to show um, any type of sensitivity to you and your circumstance it's never going to happen beloved so if you are dealing with narcissists and you're watching readings with hopes of there being some sort of positive outcome for you that is absolutely not going to happen a narcissist unless they are getting treatment you know, like going to counseling and they need to go to like psychotherapists in order to get the treatment that they need or else they are just manipulating everything and everyone about around them to get the outcome that they want. So there is an imbalance. There is a, 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 a disorder. You know, there is a block in their ability to show a true um, empathy. You know, it, it, it's they, they lack that ability. So please protect yourselves. I don't know why <laughs> this message is coming out, but I, I feel strongly it's for some of you all. You may not realize that you are in narcissistic relationships or you have a narcissistic dynamic with someone um, or someone that is, you're dealing with, I should say, is a narcissist. And I know that word has been floating around a lot over the past five years. I've been hearing it a lot, but I strongly feel um just the way this world is made up right now, you know, with social media, with likes, you know, with all of these things, you know, subscribers, followers, it kind of creates a narcissistic personality. Um, you got to kind of be all about you to be able to kind of keep the wave going, you know, to be trending, you know, you got to have 455,000 photos of yourself in every outfit in your closet or every vacation you take, you got to, you know, you're looking for the likes, you're, that's the only reason why you're uploading stuff is because you're looking for the likes, you know, the likes, you're looking for that dopamine hit, you know, um, and that's not everybody, but most, you know, most people in the society, that's what they've become, they've become, you know, very self-absorbed, very self-focused. And it's because the way social media is set up with the likes and all of that, if you didn't have any likes, it wouldn't even matter. But because people focus so much on the likes or how many subscribers or how many followers or how many this, that's what's really like 
standing out now is well how many followers you have that's how a lot of stars are found now you know if they have a strong found a, a strong following um, on social media, then they could get a gig, they could get a job. Most of the actors you see right now were found on Instagram and TikTok videos and YouTube, you know. Um, so it just goes to show that this is the reality we're living in. And I feel a lot of people walking around with this disorder has a lot to do with, you know, social media. I really feel like that because it kind of, it programs you to think that way, to think that, you know, every day you got to be posting your life as if you live this perfect life. Meanwhile, you live this very, <laughs> this very, me you know, meager lifestyle and there's nothing wrong with that. But because some of these individuals are looking for, you know, the likes and the love and all of that, you know, it, it, it kind of makes them feel a little validated, you know, so just be mindful. Um, that's one of the reasons why I don't show how many followers I have or how many subscribers I should say I have on my um, YouTube because I'm just like, who cares? Like at the end of the day, like who really gives up? You know what I'm saying? I don't. I just care about the quality of the people that's that's subscribed. You know, I don't really care about how many. I mean, people are going as far as like buying subscribers just so they could appear a certain way. I mean, I saw one girl, she had like 5,000 subscribers one week and then she shot up to 200 and something thousand a week later. And I'm just like, is it that serious? You know, and so, I mean, people really get caught up in the hype. If you're really here for the right reasons, you don't care about that stuff. That stuff doesn't matter. All you're trying to do is is just pass the message. Um, and that's why I'm imparting this information to you, that if you are dealing with narcissists, you need to cut them off and you need to go cold turkey on that ass. I don't care how painful it is, but you will start to see the damage that individual was doing once you create the boundary you can't see it now because the lines are blurry but once you cut that energy off and you start your healing process which most of you are already doing um but it will really kick in when you're not in communication with an ex or a narcissist narcissistic family member whomever you're dealing with friend, you know, when you disconnect and disengage and completely protect your en energy and set up those boundaries, you're going to start to see just how damaging that relationship was, not only to you energetically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, it affects you. It affects your everyday because they are playing mind games, whereas you're being genuine they don't respect you because what they are looking to do is take advantage. And whenever they come in, they play on your, your emotional heartstrings and that's how you let them in. Or they'll pretend to have done some work or to have had some sort of epiphany. They see things now and then you let them in and then they go right back to the same ish they was doing before. Protect your energy, protect your space, cut off anything, anyone that does not serve your highest good. Love isn't confusing. It isn't painful. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't disrespect. It doesn't abuse, whether verbally, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, or physically. It just does not do that. So if you are in relationships or you are longing for someone that has done these things to you, you need to regroup. You know what I'm saying? Regroup, get back to the drawing board and do some self-analysis because I'm telling you, some of you all are still attached to narcissistic people and they are never going to change, which means you will continue this cycle. You will continue these lessons. You will continue these painful encounters until you learn the lesson because the lesson shall repeat until it's learned. All right. So I digress. Whew, I had to let that out. Somebody needed to hear that. So welcome to anybody that may be new. My name is Q. I too am a Scorpio. I channel messages intuitively. I am clear audience. So you will hear music playing in the background. Right now we have Jill Scott. This is called The Fact Is I Need You. How fitting. I need you. So somebody needs you. They, I'm hearing automatically. They need your energy. They need you to care. They need you. They need your finances. They need your empathy, your sympathy. They need you in order for them to function. Otherwise, they can't function. That's how they live. They live vicariously through other people. 
And the name of this album is called Beautifully Human. So you are a beautiful soul, Scorpios. A lot of you all are beautiful souls and you have attracted darkness to you because just like a moth to a flame, you're going to attract certain people to you. They're going to be blinded by your light. And some of them are going to try to snuff your light. They're going to try to dim your light. They're going to try to snuff you out. But this is what you all could be dealing with is narcissistic personalities, people who feel entitled, people who feel um, like, you know, you are to be obligated to them in some way. You are to kiss the ground that they walk on. You are to, you know, bend over backwards for them, go above and beyond for them, even if they give you nothing. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, be mindful of the relationships, the dynamics that you have with these individuals. Make sure to create healthy boundaries. Don't just li listen to, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, a Scorpio reading and just listen, but you're not applying. You know, knowledge is the application. You have to apply the knowledge. knowledge in other words, the application of knowledge becomes wisdom. So you have to apply the things you've learned to show that you have the knowledge so that you can become a better version of yourself ultimately, which means you're now wiser. So make sure to apply whatever it is you're learning. When you get jewels and gems, when somebody drops pure fire on that ass in a reading, make sure you take note of that and you start to apply expeditiously. Don't wait don't wait. You know what I'm saying? Take action because this is your life we're, we're, we're speaking of. For those of you who these readings resonate with, these, this is your life. You know your story. I don't know your story. I'm reading the energy, the cards, but a lot of you all, you're, you, you, you comment in the section in the, you know, you comment in the comment section, how the messages resonated, how, you know, I just spoke your story. So it's like apply the things that are being said so that you can level up, so that you can free yourselves even, you know, from certain situations that's kind of keeping you stuck and stagnant, you know, not just, you know, physically, but like emotionally, you know, energetically, you're stuck and you have to, you got to change, you know, your, your out, you know, your, your outlook or your perspective, you know what I'm saying? In order to get a different outcome. So give me one moment. I'm sorry. All right, my bad. I apologize. I was still on the clock and had to clock out. But um so yes, so please be mindful of that. Um you know, if you are dealing with narcissists that you cut ties, you have to sever the ties. Um in the former reading, we had um Teddy P singing close the door and then we had waiting in vain. Some of you all, that could be applicable to some of you who are waiting for an ex. And if you know your ex was abusive, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, or physically, then you needn't be waiting for someone that has wronged you in that way or has caused you harm in that way. So please be mindful, love yourselves more, know your worth, know your value, heal a little longer if necessary, but definitely don't take anyone back that has you know, mind ucked you to the point where you're insecure or where you're uh, questioning your worth and your own value or where you think that you have to go above and beyond to appease and please someone because that's not what love is going to do. Love is going to match your energy and what you give, you're going to receive. That is a reciprocal relationship. When someone has you feeling like you aren't good enough, bail immediately. Leave that relationship expeditiously okay so I digress um so like I said right now we got Jill Scott she's playing uh the fact is I need you so someone needs you and they're trying to um get you to fall for the same old same old this is the same old trick the same old shenanigans that's the one thing about a narcissist they're a one trick pony they, they will pull out the same trick over and over and over and the crazy thing is you'll fall for it every time and it's because of your genuinity, because of your true care and concern and love for that person. Um, but they're just playing games. So be, be mindful because you have someone that's just wanting you because they need you, but not because they love you or because they want to offer you something real or tangible or because they want to make it up to you. It's because they need you. So they might need you for the moment. And then once they get what they need from you, what do you think they're going to do? 
They're going to drop you like a bag of tricks, like they're just going to drop you. So don't continue to fall for the okie doke. Don't continue to get duped by the same person with the same old game. At least level up. You know what I'm saying? Pull a checkmate on that ass every now and then, you know? But definitely, like, I feel honestly, strongly, speaking from experience, you know, you need to cut the narcissists off and never look back. Never, ever, ever look back. I'm telling you, they don't change. It could be one year, two year. It could be post pandemic. It could be post COVID. They're coming back with the same old, same old. And unless someone is going to a psychotherapist and they're starting to take notice and accountability for the things they've done wrong, then you can, you could actually, you know, you could show, you could see the human side of them. You, st I still wouldn't accept them back because to me, they'll do anything to get what they want. Even pretending that, you know, Hey, I'm going to psychotherapy, just like you suggested, you know, they'll do anything just to get what they want, you know, because in their mind, they're playing a game. Everything is a game. Everything is about one upping winning that that's all they care about is winning, you know? So don't play the game. And the only way you can't play the way you don't play the game is just by dis disengaging entirely. But, um, like I said, I digress. We're going to see what's coming out with the cards. Um, so as I said, this is going to be a general reading, my beloved Scorpios. If you are new, I do general readings. My spiel is eat the fish, spit out the bones. If it doesn't apply, let it fly by. Please do not leave me no long winded comment like some folks that have been since blocked from the channel because they don't know they don't actively listen <laughs> to, you know, the spiel. It's like a lot of the intro is like you see, I, I give a lot of little um, downloads that I'm picking up from the songs. But, you know, some people try to skip past some of this information and it's just like with when you're telling me in the comments um you know girl you don't know what you're talking about i'm not taking no x back and i'm blocking i'm i'm unsubscribing because you telling people to i'm like what part of eat the fish spit out the bones doesn't like resonate like where, where aren't you getting that so I'm not going back and forth with you. What I'm going to do is just block you. You know, you, you, I'm not your cup of tea. <laughs> you know, maybe you need some coffee. But um, so, yes, this is also timeless. So my spiel is, uh, again, whenever you see this video popping up in your feed, that was the divine timing intended for you all to do so. All right. So let's go ahead and do some house cleaning. All right. I call upon the elements of water, fire, earth, air, ether, and spirit. Ashe. I ask our beautiful angels, archangels, ancestors, ascended masters, spirit guides, deities, animal totems, earth, mother Gaia, universe, source, the divine to shine a powerful, powerful message of love and of light. I call personally upon Baba Obatala, Mama Oya, and Baba Ogun. To bless me with the intuition and discernment of my cards. Help me to pick up on the energy, the number, synchronicity, and vibrations of my cards. And so it is. So mote it be. Ashe, ashe, ashe. So let's see who this is that's praying on your downfall and why. And so we have Mary J. Blige featuring R. Kelly. And this is called It's On. So somebody's in a secret competition with you. I mean, I feel like somebody's just really heated. Um, because I feel you're not like focusing on them. You're, you're, you're doing you, you're making moves, you're making power moves at that. And you're just simply not in a space where you're overly concerned with what other people have going on because you got enough going on as is. And I feel some of these individuals are taking you doing you very much personally. So, you know, maybe the, in their mind, they're like, okay, it's on now. You know, it's on now. I'm not, I'm not playing with Scorpio. I'm, I'm about to get him. I'm about to, you know, get him trapped. So let's see what we got coming out with the numerology deck. That's the deck I like to start out with. So on the bottom of the deck, we have Rebirth. 
So rebirth is your energy. That's a part of the transformation process that you go through. When you go through some sort of karmic lesson and you learn from those karmic lessons and you complete that karmic cycle, then you go through what is called a rebirth. There's a shift of your consciousness. You start to pivot, things change, and now you are merging someone brand new. Someone has recognized your personal growth, you leveling up, you being entire, like very intuitive, very spiritual. And I feel like this is something that someone um, is like, it's like they are, it's like they admire it, but they also, they hate it. They hate that about you because this is what makes you not as gullible um, or naive. You're not as gullible or naive as maybe you have been or were in the past. And so this rebirth, this transformation, it's like, they're like, damn, it's on, you know, it's on now because they feel like, you know, you are, you're not responding to the usual tactics, um, you know, the usual distraction tactics that they pull out. And so now they feel like, you know, they have some sort of um, vendetta. So we got karmic completion and rebirth. I can't make this up. So you got the number 10 karmic completion. This is a gray card. So you went through hell and high water with this person. This person brought nothing but drama, pain, stress, toxicity, lies, deceit, trickery this is all they did this was someone that was a snake they was plot they weren't playing fair they were playing dirty and I feel like by you dealing with this person this is what led to you going through a major transformation because this person caused changes within you you had to start assessing yourself the 16 rebirth reduces to seven and this is the seven chariot in traditional tarot I feel like that's what got you the hell up out of dodge was because you was dealing with someone that had you bound and stuck and I feel more of it was it was mostly mind uckery you know what I'm saying I'm not saying the f part for all of you who may be new you don't understand or understand my my lingo <laughs> you know what I'm saying my lingo but it, that mind uckery you know the the gaslighting the trickery the games the mental games they had you in a fog they had you really really caught up in some sort of illusion and delusionment and I feel like you you broke free from it the 16 7 this is like you breaking free from something that was binding because the chariot moves with a force but it moves with a force because it has found balance it has found that sense of self-control in order to move you have to be powerful in order to get two powerful horses to move in the same direction or to be able to even get them to you know um to be able to maneuver um a chariot to be able to to drive or to to um be the force to have that chariot moving in the direction. So you have to be balanced within yourself, you know, mind, body, and soul. And that's what we see here with you. So we got me, myself, and I playing by Beyonce. So that's what you're focusing on. You're loving yourself. You're taking care of you. You're focusing on self-care, self-discipline, self-love. And that's what other individuals, whoever these karmics are, the people that's praying on your downfall, they don't like that. Because maybe in the past, you used to go above and beyond for them. And now you're very guarded with your space, your time, your energy. It's like currency to you now. So you're not divvying that out as easily as you may have in the past. People pop barely can get you on the phone. They barely can get you to come out to events because you are really protecting your energy. You're not playing those type of games. Me, myself, and I is all about you being in spiritual alignment, being grounded, being in that high vibration and not allowing anything external to yourself to distract you or to throw you out of equilibrium. So that is a very cerebral place to be in. That's a very meditative state to be in. It's like you're meditating to get things straight, contemplating contemplating, re-evaluating, you could be recuperating, you could be rejuvenating, but this is the energy that you're in and that's what individuals are really ticked off about. You could have blocked these individuals as well. Um, you know, so in the early, you know, when I first started the reading, I was picking up on narcissism and um, I feel like many of you, like I said, that could be your testimony. That could very well be some of you all's testimony. Um, but some of you, could really be, you know, weak to that individual. And though you are the ones that spirit wants to get through to in terms of releasing that energy because that narcissist is never going to change. As long as you keep that door open, they're going to always walk through it. So it's very important to not only close the door, but put a goddamn bolt on that ish so they can't come back. All right. Until they do some work or until they improve, you know, 
And that'll take a lifetime for some of these folks because some of them are walking around not even realizing that there's something wrong. You know, if somebody has not, let me tell you right now how you could tell whether or not you should give someone another chance. If they have not apologized to you and, 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 and gave you details as to what they're apologizing for. Now, I'm not talking about no blanketed apology. Yo, I'm sorry. What the hell are you sorry for? I need to know why you're sorry. I need to know that you are aware of what you did. So if no one has sat you down and had that like really that heart to heart, you know what it's like when you have a heart to heart, when you feel like you really broke some ground with a person, where you're having a conversation from freaking, you know, daylight to daylight, trying to get to the root cause of where the problem occurred. If you don't have that type of dialogue with someone after they done broke you, disregarded of you, abandoned you, backstabbed you, cheated on you, lied to you, defamed your character, talked ill of you. If they don't come back and try to right that wrong first and foremost, because that's the first step is taking not only accountability, but apologizing, being open to hearing how you felt and expressing their true feelings. If they haven't done that, they're not sorry. Sorry, not sorry. That's how they feel about the situation. Just like Beyonce said, sorry, I ain't sorry. That's how they feel. They're not sorry. Narcissists are never sorry because they don't see that they're doing anything wrong. So that's why you need to cut yourselves free from that karmic or from that, uh, that karmic cord, that yoke, because this was a lesson. This was a lesson for you to learn to love yourself, love yourself more. Okay. So I digress. All right. So on the bottom of the deck, when I look over, it says relationship change. So yes, some of you all definitely need to break free. If you are still in this karmic relationship or dealing with someone who is abusive to you in any way, shape, form or fashion, you need to break free. You need to be single for a moment. You need to learn to love yourself, fend for yourself, stand up perpendicular in your own square, stand erect, stand your ground, speak your truth, learn to do those things. You know what I'm saying? Practice that before you get into a relationship or before you try to repair something that's irreparable. You know what I'm saying? So let's go ahead, cut the deck, see what's coming and going out, going on for my beloved Scorpios. Who's praying on Scorpios downfall and why? May I have a message of love and of light spirit? And right now we have uh, India Irie, and this is called Psalm 23. So some of you all, spirit is saying you need to read Psalm 23 because you are more than likely under some sort of spiritual attack, psychic attack. But what she says in this lyric is, try to put this stick in between my will, but they can't stop my motivation, nothing will. So somebody's trying to put a stick in your wheel. And your wheel is your wheel of fortune. That's where something that's destined for you, it can't come in if there's a stick in it because the wheel can't move. So this person is trying to dim your light, just like I said in the beginning of the reading. Whoever this narcissist is, they're trying to dim your light, block your blessings. They're trying to prey on your downfall because they don't want to see you succeed, especially without them. But they don't want to see you succeed at all. Even when you were with them, you could have noticed that this person was always in a competition with you. They're looking at you as the comp when, or uh, the ops when y'all are supposed to be a team, a unit. Y'all are supposed to be function as a foundation and they looking at you like you the op, like you, you know what I'm saying? And so they playing for the ops trying to come against you leaving the door open for other people to attack because they're showing how weak they were in the relationship. So whoever you were dealing with, this is someone that was absolutely sabotaging you, sabotaging your, your, your um, opportunities. This is someone that intentionally tries to keep you stuck in your mind, keep you mind upped thinking about them because if you're thinking about them then you can't think of ways to you know be a co-creator and manifest new things for yourself or to go after those opportunities that you see fit for yourself or how to be creative um you know if you have a business like you can't think about nothing else if you're stressing over someone who's intentionally doing things to push your buttons and to keep you trapped so you have to like you got to function from that space of that chariot, you know, that chariot is very, he's all seeing, all knowing he knows now because he's been enlightened and that's why he's moving with the force because now there's this sense of assertiveness. So that's what you guys are doing. I feel is like you're now starting to use discernment when you are dealing with these individuals because you're starting to realize is like every time that person comes around, it's the same old, same old. It's almost to the point where you can predict it's like they're so predictable 
You know what I'm saying? And when you can predict someone's moves before they can move it, not only does that speak to how intuitive you are, but it just speaks to how, you know, lazy this individual has to be for them to keep coming around, playing the same get games and, and singing the same sad songs and, and then expecting you to fall for the okie doke every time. And that's only because you did, you know, but now you got to draw the line in the sand and don't do it again. All right. So we got communication here. So somebody's going to communicate and I'm here with a forked tongue. Nothing they're going to say is going to be real. It's like they they this is somebody that some of you all, this is the person that will call you and they will pull on your heartstrings because they know you're empaths, because they know you have a big heart, because they know that you're emotionally intelligent and you're always trying to make sure everybody around you is good. Even the ones that do you dirty, you still have an open heart to people. You still care. You know what I'm saying? You you don't you're not that ter I don't care how cold people try to make a Scorpio seem. If even if somebody's wronged you and somebody calls you and say, "Hey, you know, such and such happened." It's like you're going to put that personal beef to the side to make sure they're okay on a human level, on a spiritual level. But you're not going to forgive them and take them back. That's not a door for them to come back. And that's what this person realizes about you is that you are very caring. So don't don't be the person that's considered nice you know what I'm saying I broke this down a couple of months ago how you know you know the the etymology of words people need to study the etymology of words because we speak words all day long and we're just speaking spells on each other all day not even realizing but nice this person thinks that you're nice and nice is another term for stupid or foolish so this is why they tend to come back playing the same game and not even trying to revise something or you know come up with a, a new improved game no they're gonna come back with the same old same old something happened something that's gonna pull on your emotional strings because they know your emotional beings so that's what they know that's their instant go-to so don't fall for the okie doke this 33 communication in my hand is saying you are enlightened enough you are wise enough listen to your intuition trust you know trust what you're feeling intuitively but also use discernment when this person does return if they do come back talking that oh woe is me crap you got to shut the door and and don't even allow yourselves you know the availability like don't even be available for anybody that just comes back you know with a sob story and a sad song but they don't check in to see how you're doing if that's a, that because that's just one sided, it's still the same problem you had when you was in the relationship. It was a non reciprocal relationship, flighty in and out, only there when they need something and bounce when they don't. So why would you be available when the person needs to come in and, and, and needs you to stroke their back and oh, it's going to be OK. That, and then once they're all, they get what they need from you, then they bounce again and you don't hear from them. So that's like a perpetual, you know what I'm saying? That's a perpetual situation and circumstance. And, and, and you can't blame anyone else when you keep falling for it. So that's why spirit was like, look, if you're dealing with a narcissist, let me tell you the signs. And that's what they're telling me. This is like coming, like <laughs> it's coming straight from source, man. Cause it's just like, I keep harping on this and it's because this is what some of you all are dealing with, but let's go ahead, get some messages from the tarot. I'm gonna cut the deck three times. Whew, Lord. Like I haven't even taken a, a breath. These messages is like pouring in right now y'all so let's see what we got coming in going out going on we got music newness so we got spirituality i can't make this up 77 is your overall um energy so you what did i say you all are very psychic so you need to trust what you're feeling we just had the 33 communication which is telling you use discernment the 77 is also telling me that you got to trust what you feel intuitively 77 breaks down to 14 that's five so the divine is telling you use discernment when somebody comes in singing that what was me crap you know what i'm saying because that's a tune you done heard a gazillion times from this one person whether this is an ex a family member a friend nummy you know what I'm saying? Whoever this is, this is not somebody that has your 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 best interest at heart. I'll tell you that. This is an all purple card. So this speaks to you being very very like cerebral, very sensitive to energy. You are very much an ascended master. You can see beyond the illusions. So don't fall for the okie doke. We got 61 7 again. 61 self love is in my hand. So so far we got 777. So this person I feel automatically off the rip. What I'm feeling is this person is very very jealous of the fact that you seem to be very lucky 
It's like whatever you do, things work out in your favor. It's like all of the hard work you've been doing, whatever it is they've been doing to try to sabotage it, it's like those blessings still come in. They haven't been able to block you, stunt you, you know, they haven't been able to, to stunt your growth in any way. And that's what's making them even more angry. That's why I was picking up on you having some sort of secret competition. And with this seven, seven and seven, it's like you already know you are you're very much aware. You know what I'm saying? I'm hearing there's nothing new under the sun because we just have um, music soul child newness playing. So it's like there's nothing new under the sun, especially with this person. But there's nothing new that you haven't seen before because you you are in this like you're looking at everything from a bird's eye view you're using logic more now than ever you know what I'm saying so you're very cerebral with this self-love that's why I was saying you're not m making no moves unless it checks the boxes for you remember we have me myself and I that's about self-love self-love is is the best love and that's what you've come to realize in dealing with selfish individuals you know what I'm saying? When you deal with somebody that doesn't appreciate what you're doing, the sacrifices that you make and have made, the time and energy that you have put into a connection and they just disregard and discard you like you're crap. Oh, no. That's what that six, that self-love is. 61 is all about the self. That's ascension. You know what I'm saying? Your crown chakra is activated. Your ground, your higher, higher self, your ancestors, they have been sending you downloads, transmissions, synchronicities, sensations. You've been seeing angel numbers. You've been having all these type of divine interventions, letting you know the importance of putting you first. Self-love is an inside job. Maybe you was looking outside for something that was always within you. And now that you have that self-love, you ain't never letting nobody mistreat you, disregard you, treat you less than. You're never putting up with that again. So that's why the 7-7 seven, seven spirituality is here, because you have ascended, beloveds. You have ascended. You have mastered your craft, is what I just heard in my mind's eye. So let's see. Who's praying on Scorpio's downfall and why? Who is this person that's praying on Scorpio's downfall and why? We have two cards that flew out, and we have domestic harmony. And this is the number 46. 46 is 10. 10 re represents an ending. So there's an ending of some sort of, you know, harmonized connection. You was in a union. That would be a harmonized connection. Duality is harmony. So this is a connection that broke. This is someone that you are disconnected from. Someone you've had some sort of painful ending with. Endings are always painful. And when you have a... Um, a connection that you felt was otherwise harmonized and then someone just does some out of the blue off the Richter type of ish to, to dismantle that or to, to cause the demise of that, it causes a lot of pain. But this is someone that wants a new start because this 46 reduces to one. So this person is trying to, you know, they want a new beginning. They, they, they got a lot of passion. I feel like they were listening, like they was following their loins you know what I'm saying following their loins they was in a low vibration I feel you know what I'm saying because that that 46 is giving me like that felicious energy even if it's, a, if it's a feminine energy you know the 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 one represents the root chakra and that's about reproduction sexuality death rebirth and we just literally saw a rebirth so someone who was caught up in you know this you know this sexual energies uh, is what led to, you know, the demise of some sort of domestic union relationship or connection. This nine, nine compassion is how they feel about you. So this is what they are hoping for. They're hoping for you to show that same compassion. They see you as someone compassionate, which you are. You know, like I said, you're the type that even if somebody did you dirty, if you find out that they're in a in in, in a um tough situation, you're gonna you're gonna still look out because that you had that love. You know what I'm saying? You know that you love when you love, you love for real. You don't be loving for fake. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? So it's like this compassion, this is how this person sees you. But nine nine represents the highest number of change. So you you're changing from this person that is so usually uh, very compassionate and sympathetic and, you know, available and empathetic to them. They're starting to see that you're changing. You know, the, the divine is also reminding you, um, you know, that compassion um, requires forgiveness. You know, so you don't have to walk around screw face in the world because, you know, you're dealing with a narcissist. I'm not telling you that either. I'm just saying that you got to know, know how to disengage with energy that no longer um matches your energy and vibration you got to honor yourself now 
It isn't about showing someone how how loyal you are, how faithful you are. No, let them do the work now because you've already showed and proved. And what did they give you? Now you need to love on yourself. That's why me, myself, and I was playing by Beyonce. And that's why you now have this compassion because it's run its course. Nine, nine reduces to nine, nine is the highest number of change. You need to change the way in which you deal with this individual because they need to learn the lesson. They may have to deal with their own karma. But if you keep coming in and saving a hoe, <laughs> a literal, <laughs> whether it's a female or a male, you know what I'm saying? Then they're never going, they're going to never going to figure it out. They're never going to figure it out. It's just like it, you can't help people who aren't trying to help themselves or else you're just, you're just being, um, you know, you're being that type of person. That's just, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Oh my God. It's on the tip of my tongue. Give me a moment. Enabling is the word I was looking for. So you're just enabling, you're enabling someone. So the divine is saying, you know, there's a way to show compassion. You just pray and forgive them all, but at a distance. So you can still show compassion. You can still show forgiveness and you could still, you know what I'm saying? Not judge a person in their, in their situation and circumstance, or even the situation you may be in with them. Um, but at a distance, it's time now to create distance. Nine deals with the hermit. So this is about, you know, disconnecting, disengaging, detaching from the things that no longer serve you and search within yourself to figure out why you still want to extend yourself to someone that has not even deserved your energy to begin with. So that's what the divine is telling you. Compassion. Be more compassionate to yourself. You know what I'm saying? Be more forgiving of, your, of yourself even. Be more, you know, don't judge you. You know, don't judge the co connection. Just analyze assess you know do some soul searching you know for this time being and we have um mary j blige this is called mary's joint you know what i'm saying so you know some of y'all y'all might be your names might be mary but we have 33 communication on the bottom of the deck again and we're about to pull a card for what's hidden so what's hidden is you know be prepared for some communication um i definitely feel like um and I'm hearing that's that the 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 song Mary Mary had a little lamb little lamb <laughs> I don't know why I'm hearing that but I'm hearing that because it's showing the 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 emphasis is on the lamb lambs tend to be very um um very meek you know what I'm saying and so I feel like that's how this person may perceive you you know they they perceive you as being like you know, meek as a lamb, you know, sort of speak, you know, but, um, and, and this time around, you know, with this 77, I feel like you, you are the furthest thing from meek, but this is someone who's again, get trying to gaffle you trying to play the games. You know, this is someone trying to pull the wool over your eyes again. And that's why divine is telling you, look, communication, this is what's hidden. Someone could be, you know, approaching you with communication, but you need to use discernment. This 336, that is the first eye. So use discernment. Use discernment, Scorpios. Don't let your heart start palpitating when you hear that person's voice. So when you get that text, when that ping, because this person knows you, they know that you're very compassionate and empathetic and sensitive and caring and loving and nurturing because that is your makeup. That's the way you're made. You're a water sign. That's what you do. You're a healer, a natural healer. So you try to heal and mend and fix and, you know, and correct. But this isn't your job anymore. This is this is this person needs to work with the divine. They got to start all over again. They're back at one. So they got a lot of trauma that they need to heal because remember their energy, the person that is preying on your downfall, they're 46 domestic harmony, which means they lack balance. They're imbalanced. And the reason because is because they need to go back to the drawing board, go back to the root cause. This one deals with the root chakra, 46. The card domestic harmony is 46. It reduces to one. That's the root chakra. They got to go back to the root cause of the issue. So that could be familial issues, childhood traumas, abandonment issues, drug addiction, whatever their, 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 um, 
vices may be, whatever traumas that they need to go back and heal and mend, that's, that's why there's a disconnect here. This person is a product of their environment and however they grew up, whatever they lacked, that is why they're the way they are. And there's nothing you can do. They have to do the work. They're back at one. One is where they need to start. They need to start over. They need to heal. They got to start, not even start over because I don't think they ever even began. But anyway, I digress. So let's go. Let's why is um, what's hidden in the energy for our beloved Scorpios? So we have um, creativity three. So what's hidden in the energy is you are going to be creating something masterful. I heard masterful. This is like you getting flooded with new ideas, new creative ideas, starting projects, starting new businesses. Maybe you're going back to school. Maybe you're studying, you know, um, under a master teacher, a, a Reiki healer. Uh, maybe you're learning sound therapy. Maybe you're learning a new instrument. Maybe you are learning how to become an engineer, a music producer. You're learning something new. This is a very studious energy, um, but this also speaks to a very... Um, powerful energy like you're in a very powerful energy of creating something you're making something you're manifesting or birthing some idea some creative project is just going to generate a lot of wealth a lot of abundance I see things working out this is an all yellow card and it's just very sunny and bright so I feel like there's a bright future ahead infinite supply there's like new beginnings threes are all about manifestation so you're seen in the divinity of you know a divine feminine or divine masculine very loving very nurturing very powerful you know very successful very beautiful and attractive you know this three the number three is the empress so you're seen as regal very royal you know you're seen as royalty you're seen as someone who knows their worth their value you're also seen as someone that is um like it's your birthright, like you are meant to be successful, like there's just an energy, a light that you radiate and it just shows, you know, that you are, you're, you're royal. It's just like, you know, when you see someone, you know, how, you know how when you're younger and you see someone, you're like, dang, they look like a star or they're going to blow up. Like there's just some kind of light that radiates or some energy frequency that they give off. And you could just, you know, that they're going to be successful or they're just going to, whatever it is they choose to do in life. It's like, it's, they're going to blow up, you know, and that's how I feel. We got the number one new beginnings on the bottom of the deck here. So you got a brand new beginning here, beloved Scorpios. And I feel like you're going to get everything you ever wished for, hoped for and desired because what we have playing right now is Mary J. Blind, Blige, everything. So you're going to receive everything that you may have been praying for and manifesting. Because what's hitting is like your hard work, all of that you've been working on. Because you know that Empress and the Emperor are like, you know, they are... Um, entrepreneurs so they start businesses from the ground up like they turn a thought into reality that's why they're master manifestors and I feel like you're manifesting something that's going to pr provide some sort of new beginning new opportunity remember we had n music soul child newness and this is the reason why someone is praying on your downfall because like I said you're like literally turning you know, everything you touch is turning to gold. This person tried to destroy you, block you, you know, hinder you, and you just excelled. You transformed into and had this rebirth and emerged as a divine feminine, divine masculine. So that means that you've been doing a whole lot of work, a whole lot of internal work. You've reached the ascended master level because 7-7 seven, seven was the first card that came out of the deck, spirituality. Seven is the crown chakra. So you went from the root chakra, which is your chakra, Scorpio, to all the way to the crown chakra. That's what opened up the reading. And so what's hidden is you're in this empress energy. You're very radiant right now, very attractive. It's like you are blinding folks. It's like this person sees you as getting everything you want. Like I said, you just seem very lucky because remember we had 7-7 seven, seven, and then 61 self-love was on the bottom of the deck in my hand at the time and it was 777. Seven, seven. So it's like this person just sees you as very lucky. Everything you want, you always get. It's like no matter what they try to do to block or hinder or stunt your growth, it's like it didn't work because here you are still radiating love and light and still embodying 
the energy and vibration of a divine feminine or divine masculine. And that's because, you know, Mama Ma'at sees everything. So you've been sowing in good faith, which means the seeds that you've been sowing in good faith are going to harvest and it's going to provide and produce carnucopia for you. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be eating off that for many days, many years. You're not only you, but your children. And for some of you, your children's children. So we got another message for the outcome. So the outcome is 13 effort. And then we have nine completion. I can't make this up. So you have nine, nine, nine. And then you have seven, seven here. So this is the effort. You got 777 seven, seven because it's 13 is four, the three right next to it. So you have a divine masculine that looks like they want to come in, swoop in and make the effort. Or maybe this is someone that didn't make the effort. The 13 represents a death. The lack of someone making the effort is what led to the demise of this relationship. But it also led to you becoming more self-sufficient and independent. And now you can completely close the door to that chapter with this completion right next to it. But you embody the strength, courage, and wisdom of that divine masculine, the emperor. You know what I'm saying? Because you got three creativity, what's hidden, and then 13 effort came out for the outcome, which is right next to three. 13 reduces to four. So by you focusing on loving yourself, by you focusing on self-care and, and exhibiting some sort of self-discipline, self-respect, self-dignity, it has enabled you to start, you know, establishing a strong, solid foundation, focusing on your independence, your security, your stability, your children, your family, your home, your finances, the self, self-love. You had to take care of you. And with this nine this means that you've been able to acquire those things. You've been able to achieve that goal. So now you can really walk away. You're, you're setting up those boundaries because now you realize, like, I can do good on my own. I don't need anyone. Someone needs you, but you didn't need them. All you needed to do was believe in your ability to stand perpendicular in your square. And you're doing that. And not only are you doing it, you're superseding anyone's expectations, whoever doubted you. You're superseding your own because I feel in the beginning you could have had a little bit of doubt. But that's why you're here proving not only them wrong, but you're proving yourself right. Because now with this nine completion, like I said, they see you as nine, nine compassion. So they hoping for you to be all compassionate. But look what you're throwing up. You're throwing up a different nine because nine, nine compassion still reduces to nine. That's 18. That's nine. So they hoping that you, you know, you still going to be that that sweet and tender caring nurturing Scorpio that you've always been to them but what you pulling out of someone completely different I'm done son <laughs> I'm done <laughs> nine completion is you chucking up the deuces and bouncing out of that mofo like you're leaving you're leaving on the next train for real for real like you're, you're not you don't have no time for that this is you putting the drawing the line in the sand and setting up the boundaries as the divine told you and this 67 on the bottom of the deck is um, physical activity. So you're going to be very active. You're going to take action. That 13 represents you saying, I'm done. I'm leaving. We got Aretha Franklin singing rock steady. So you are definitely chucking up them deuces and you're going to steadily be leaving that person because this is done. You're done. Thir 67 is 13. This could be the father to your child because we have parenting right underneath that. 63 and then physical activity so you was dealing with a karmic um co-parent and you're going to receive abundance and wish fulfillment because you've successfully completed this cycle and i got the hiccups and so we got jodeci right now fiending so this person is fiending and obsessed with you because you have created boundaries. Like I said, you completed the cycle. You're no longer falling for the okie doke. You're no longer letting the mind uck you. You're no longer becoming all, you know, bamboos. You're not allowing yourself to be bamboos. You're no longer naive and gullible. On the bottom of the deck, we have door to value. This is the number 31 from the energy oracle deck. And 31 reduces to four. That's the stability, baby. This is the stability you obtain when you cut that person off for not making enough effort, for not prioritizing you like they was everyone else in their lives. This is you finally getting your own, like I said, you know, finally focusing on self-improvement. 
your security, your stability, your family, your future, your your um legacy and not preoccupied with what this other person was doing. And now they fiending for you because you're no longer giving them the attention. The attention whore is fiending for your attention and you are no longer giving them the attention. And this is why they're stuck in this space of feeling imbalanced. Domestic harmony 46, that represents an end of feeling harmony. And we have the thinking man and door to value. And this is the number 46. So this person is now thinking and strategizing a plan, like I said, to not only manipulate you, but to also be able to benefit from some of this wealth that they see that you are accessing now. Because your energy is very bright, very sunny. The, the, the creativity card, the empress energy, even if you're masculine, this 13-4 effort card, they're both yellow, sunny, bright yellow cards. Your energy, 9-9 nine, nine, compassion, how they feel about you is purple, all purple as is the seven, seven spirituality. That's also purple or indigo. And so they see you as very solid. They see you as someone that is a solid catch. Like you are the, like you are, how can I say it? Like you are the one that you're that a one person, if you will, you know what I'm saying? Like you're that a one person. This person didn't realize that. But now they're starting to recognize this. They're trying to strategize, trying to plot and plan how to get you back so that they could have access to whatever this wealth is that you are obtaining now. We got the 43. They see you as a meal ticket. The 43 is the man holding a coin. So this is how they see you, whether you're feminine or masculine, they see you as somebody going out and getting it. You're getting yours. You're getting yours. You're independent. You're self-sufficient. You're grounded. You know how to make a coin. You know how to make things happen. You may have multiple streams of income right now. You may have a job or a career. Then you may also have side businesses. I shouldn't even call a side business that you're passionate about a side business. But, you know, you may have other streams of income. And they're just like looking at you like, damn, you, you not only leveled up, but you you came up. You know what I'm saying? You came up out of some like and this is because they didn't hold you in a high regard and a high esteem in the first place. They never really knew your worth and value. When you're dealing with a narcissist, you're not dealing with the real person. You're dealing with whoever the representative is they're presenting to you to that day. They, I don't even think this person ever really fully got to get to know who you were because they were so busy juggling and dealing with multiple people that I feel like they kind of got lost in their own game. You know what I'm saying? And that's why they didn't identify or notice you to be genuine or sincere. You know what I'm saying? Or didn't notice you to be as abundant or as much of a blessing or as much of that, you know, that you're like that earth angel in their life. Now they're seeing it because you're no longer there. But this person is like when you're dealing with a narcissist, like they play so many games, they, they, they trick themselves. They confuse themselves. So let's see what we got coming and going out going on with this uh um, energy Oracle deck. We're going to pull this in from energy out. See, we're going to clarify these cards and get some messages from the energy Oracle deck. Then we'll pull some messages from my deck and then we're going to wrap it up. All right. So two cards just flew out. We got a man holding a heart here. So with this 77, I feel like you all have new love coming in. You have some new love coming in, and this is somebody that loves you because this is the same energy that came out in the former reading. So the overall energy is you got somebody coming in, and this is somebody coming in to make a solid offer. This is someone that's also on your vibration. Whenever I see double numbers, I always feel like you're mirroring like a, a, a kindred spirit, a soulmate, a twin flame, a cosmic companion. And so somebody is watching you from a distance. Maybe they're waiting for you to wrap up all of this nonsense because they are very much interested. I see all of these red, beautiful flowers and roses. So there's love in this person's heart. And not only is there love in this heart, this person's heart, but there's love they want to offer you. And we got um, uh, Sly and the Family Stone. I want to take you higher. So this person wants to take you higher. They want to take you higher. This is somebody that wants to take. I'm hearing to ecstasy. 
you know, because this is seven, seven. So, you know, you already on a high frequency. So this is someone that also wants to stimulate you because they feel like you, you know, you dealing with somebody that's like immature, someone kind of childish, and they want to take you on a higher frequency. They want to get you out of, you know, that, that state of dealing with somebody that's like low vibration. So they want to stimulate you. They want to, they want to, um, engage you. And we have sirens going off. So be mindful, you know, because whoever this person, we're about to clarify the person that's preying on your downfall. So they're going, they may know, they may catch wind. You know what I'm saying? They may already have an inkling because you are so guarded now that there could be potential, you know, love options and love offers that you are starting to receive. And so they might start doing some spying. They might start doing some background checks. They might start, you know, checking your social media. They might start driving by your home or soliciting their friends or their loved ones that might live close by to start checking in. And, you know, now you now all of a sudden you're like gang stalked. You got a bunch of people checking in on you and you are completely aloof. But I feel like somebody's going to catch wind of you coming into some sort of union. We got 36 archangel Ariel here so this person they are definitely in a space where they're very cocky they have a lack of self-confidence they they lack confidence and I feel it's because whoever they could have been cheating with creeping with the player got played and so this threw them completely off. This is why they're out of equilibrium. This is why that domestic harmony. So whoever, if this was like an ex, a baby daddy, baby mama that just upped and left y'all and went into another situation, whoever they left you for, played them like they played you. They got played for Booba the Fool the way they played y'all for Booba the Fool. And now they're stuck here feeling a lack of um, confidence. They feel like you know, they, they feel broken, to be honest with you. They're out of balance. They, they It's like they feel like they lost their mojo. So we have the angel of balance here. They're wanting you to balance things out for them. They know that you are the angel of balance. We got the angel of balance on the bottom of the deck, and we're about to clarify your energy, 9-9, nine, nine, compassion. So what did I say about them seeing you as someone that brings, you know, you give them love, you give them light. Remember, we had Jill Scott saying, I need you. So they need you to fill the balance because you fill that void that they're now, you know, um, suffering from because whoever they was dealing with just came and took and it took everything out of them. It's like they attracted what they were. They could have got trapped in some sort of incubus succubus energy. Remember, I was saying that 46, that one, it's a very felicious number. So this could have been somebody who was just like, you know, kind of being ruled by the wand, trying to, you know, kind of being ruled by, you know, the phallus or sex or, you know, all of that. And and it just led them in a situation. And so now we got the angel of balance, you know, and we are about to clarify compassion. They wanting you because they feel like you can bring balance. But this is somebody that only lives vicariously through you. They don't they don't do deposits they don't believe in you know reciprocity equal exchange equal give and take they just come in when they need they fill their fill and then they bounce so this is by them getting you to come in and give them you know to restore them who's going to restore you after restoring them so it's like they're literally transferring their energy <laughs> over to you because energy is transferable people like you can't kill energy so if they feel an imbalance and out of equilibrium and then they come jacking you, jacking with your energy, coming into your life, talking about, yo, you know, that's why you can't be accepting calls from everybody. You know what I'm saying? Because people be going through ish and then they see your light shine and they be like, oh, let me call Scorpio. Scorpio will listen to my crap and I could dump all of my ish in their lap and then I can go carry on with my day. And the next thing you know, you stuck on stupid because now you're dealing with 50 people's different, you know, 50 different people's energy. Because you're caring and you're an empath and you're so compassionate and so caring. It's like, no, love you first. Remember, me, myself, and I. That's all you got in the end. That's what you found out, like Beyonce said. All right? So let's see. Why is compassion here for how this person is praying on Scorpio's downfall? Feel about our beloved Scorpios. Can I have a message of love and light? And we have Sheila E., a love bazaar. Yep. So this person went through some old bizarre, crazy-ish. 
And that's because, like I said, you attract what you are. When you operate and function in a, 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 a devil energy, a de-evil energy, you're going to meet another de-evils. Okay, so we got seven, and this is community. So your angels and ancestors are telling you, look, like I said, love from afar. Pray for your people. Smile, forgive them all, but do it from a distance. Pray for them from a distance. Do not let this person convince you to, you know, get back into your good graces for you to be going through this nonsense all over again. This is about community. This is about support. If the support isn't reciprocated, then that's not support. You know what I'm saying? You are not here to be someone's punching bag. You're not here to be someone's dumping grounds. That's not what your role is here. Friendships are equal exchanges. Love ships, equal exchanges. Family dynamics, equal exchanges. Even at your job, you do a job, you get paid. That's an equal exchange. So someone from your past who expects you after they done did you dirty, dogged you out, defamed your character, deceived you, betrayed you, stabbed you in the back, cheated on you, lied to you, stolen from you, jacked you up mentally. They expect you to be their support system all of a sudden. They expect you to support them after they did you dirty because somebody else that they cheated on you with or left you for did them dirty and they're coming back to the source with whom they did dirty to fix it and make it right. Like, tell me, like where does that make sense? Please make that make sense. So the divine is telling you, look, support love someone from a distance the seven that's also speaking to the chariot so this chariot is all about being very assertive speaking from the chest saying what you need to say but doing it in a compassionate way you don't have to cuss nobody out you don't have to raise your voice don't let anyone anger you because whoever angers you controls you all you simply have to do is disconnect and disengage and pray for them from a distance ask the universe ask source ask archangel Mikael, uriel ariel ask the angels to help this person see the light to see the truth but this is no longer your concern you know what i'm saying this is a love bazaar and this is a love bazaar because you're dealing with someone who's very bizarre they are not they're not they're in their right state of mind and there's nothing you can do other than to just you know pray for them from a distance you know and so we have all tied up. I can't make this up. This is what's hidden in the energy. Someone's trying to tie you up. We got 23. 23 is what? Five. Five is what? Throat chakra. So someone's trying to come back and get you all caught up. As the card says, all tied up. All tied up. And the way she looks on the card is she li she's literally tied up. And then she has this hair piece on. And it looks like there's something underneath the hair piece, which could be representative of the mind, uckery, and the confusion. You know, the mental anguish and anxiety, but someone's words are going to be deceptive. Someone speaking with a forked tongue. And this is someone who is very much aware that you are a divine feminine. They see you in this light. They see you as abundant, powerful. They see your worth and value. They're attracted to you, but they're also trying to deceive you so that you could take them back so that they can benefit from all of this luck and success and all of this abundance that you have being showered upon you from the divine so don't get caught up in the okie doke because you have i feel you're going to have multiple options somebody's going to talk real good like they're going to be you know somebody that's a gift of gabba a slick talker talk real fast say things that they think you want to hear but then you're going to have somebody that's real genuine because right underneath that is 14 caring connections and this 14, this person, you're going to tell that they are, they mean what they say because they're going to show it. You know what I'm talking about? Like they're going to show with their actions. That's a man's language, love language is when they really care about you, ladies, they're going to show you with their actions. You know what I'm talking about? Even men, you know, for you masculines, if a feminine really cares about you, you're going to know when you come home from that hard day work, even if she went working, when you come home you better guarantee there's going to be a hot plate sitting on that stove for you. Or you're going to have, you know, your your clean clothes and, and they folded and they hung up in the you're going to know that you're cared for. They're going to go that extra step. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and so this is what you're going to have. You're going to have somebody that's going to come through and they're going to show you the person that's not making the effort with action, but just wants you to believe words that they done lied a gazillion times before. This person is just trying to get you trapped. Mind uckery, tricknology, games, illusions. And remember, you, you're too smart for that. You're too wise for that. 
you know so this is what this person is trying to pull on you and you know the divine feminine divine masculine they know they worth now so we got strategy here on the bottom of the deck so strategy not strategy i'm sorry the 14 um caring connections on the bottom of the deck so there is someone now that's honestly, I feel like I said, they're going to come in and their actions are going to match their words. And you're going to more importantly feel that they care about you. You're not going to be confused at all by whether or not someone cares about you because the actions and their words are going to match. You know what I'm saying? So why is effort here? May I have a message of love and light? So we have a couple of um, cards here. We have indecision. So you're going to have to make a choice. You're going to be torn between two people. And that's why the divine gave you that message about the narcissist in the beginning of the reading, because they do not want you to get this twisted. They do not want you to miss an opportunity because we got the sun here. The sun is a new beginning, the dawning of a new day, new opportunities, bright future, infinite supply. This is blessings. This is healing. This is an energy of illumination and clarity and joy and peace and happiness. And this is the thinking woman, 47. So the divine is saying you're wise enough to see through the illusion. I feel like if there is confusion, um, you have to do, as I just said, like pay attention to the actions of the person because this is the number 13 effort. So if someone is putting in the effort, that's going to be a sign that this person is very sincere and they mean what they're saying. They're actually interested in having something real and having something long, um, long term with you. You're going to start to see tangibles, whether that be flowers, whether this be someone just taking you out on, on date nights, taking you out on beach walks, taking you out to go exercise, taking you out to eat, taking you out for libation, just to have some fun, go-kart racing, whatever, golf, like hiking. It's like they're going to take you out. You're going to see the effort behind the words. In other words, they're going to court you. They're going to be charming. They're going to be chivalrous. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, fellas, that feminine is going to cook for you. She's going to wash your clothes, fold them. She's going to tend to you, take care of you, have conversations, be open, you know? And so it's up to you guys to be very mindful, to check for those to, you know, not only for, you know, those signs and synchronicities, but also check for the red flags, you know, but with this 47, this 11, I feel like, you know, the thinking woman, this is what you're doing now. Like I said, you're in a very cerebral place. So you're, you're using logic, you're not, you know, no longer just all emotional and sensitive and empathic. And, you know, you're not caring about all of that no more. It's like that matters. But now you want to make sure that people mean what they say and they say what they mean because you don't take too kindly to anyone playing with your intelligence or insulting your intelligence because you have since transformed. This is the version of the new you. This is like that new version, that, you know, new and improved version of Scorpio after the rebirth. Remember, the rebirth opened up the reading. And so we have on the bottom of the deck, Sixth Chakra, Archangel Metatron. So he's reminding you to use your intuition in terms or in pertinence to um, love, because this is the number 40, 40 breaks down to four. So in terms of an emotional connection, use your intuition. And I feel you do. And that's why you make the decision to complete the cycle, to walk away from that person. Because remember, you got the eight of swords in decision clarifying 13 effort along with the sun and the thinking woman so it's not like you just made a rush decision you sat down you was in that meditative state you took some time to go within just like the hermit like i said he meditates gets things straight he sees what he needs to see there's self-discovery there's self-analysis there's a deeper more profound understanding of a circumstance and then he takes action because he's carrying that staff that staff becomes that ace of wands so he can move forward and remember, you had new beginnings show up in the reading. So with this compassion, I mean, this completion, pardon me, number nine, as the outcome, it's because you, you, you sat with it. You meditated on it for a while. You used discernment, just like Archangel Metatron is telling you, the sixth chakra. What did I say about that sixth chakra? That's your first eye. So your first eye was open. And we have um, Thela Kuti featuring D'Angelo, and this is called No Enemy. So you're no longer allowing enemies to be to to, you know, penetrate your defenses. You're not allowing enemies in your life. You don't have no frenemies, no fakes, no fugazis, no snakes, no, no scrubs. You ain't dealing with none of that. That's why this completion is here, because you're you're you've put the line in the sand. Like I said, you drew the line in the sand and you are now saying I'm done. You're changed. You know what works for you. You know what doesn't. And that's OK that this person doesn't work for you anymore. You don't have to keep holding on. 
Show some compassion to yourself. Love you more. But walk away from something that doesn't work because you don't have any time and any any room for enemies in your life because all they're going to try to do is sabotage whatever goodness you have coming to you, which is what this person has been trying to do very sneakishly, very maliciously, very snakishly. So be mindful. So with this 40... Six chakra, use discernment. That's what you do. That's why you've come to the complete conclusion that it's time to complete the cycle. So why is um, nine completion here? Remember, Metatron was on the bottom of the deck. And you know, I always expound on those messages on the bottom of the deck. So we got two cards that just flew out. We got the angel of love here. So it's like, I feel like because you've completed that cycle, now it's time for new love. So you have an angel here who is bringing someone new into your life and remember in the beginning of the reading you have a man holding a heart and I feel this is a secret admirer someone that's watching you from a distance but they know you're still wrapping up a cycle so we have this attachment so you're completing this cycle where you were dealing with attachments karmic cords you're cutting those karmic cords soul ties yokes and you're freeing yourself absolutely look at this you got the five attachment and the two journey so you have detached from whatever this was that was attaching you because it absolutely was like this very um burdensome and very heavy um energy that was kind of keeping you stuck and stagnant this is another gray card and remember we saw karmic completion in the beginning of the reading and i was explaining how it was gray this five card completion I mean attachment pardon me is also very gray so this is speaking to how heavy this was a very heavy energy that you were attached to this could have been a codependent connection whatever it was you was wearing a mask they were wearing a mask there was a lot of heaviness in this connection and I feel it required you to start to self-analyze that five deals with the hierophant so many of you started to seek wise counsel whether that you started to you know research spiritual information spiritual doctrines documents you started to go to a master teacher a healer you started to listen to certain positive information pertaining relationships or spirituality or just you know researching information on just your own occurrences day to day whether that was seeing angel numbers all the time and you're researching what that means or you're seeing certain animal totems and you're researching that that started to enlighten you because the hierophant is a master teacher he is an ascended this is someone who is like spiritually strong so that's who you go to and I feel like that's what you have become in this connection is you had to become spiritually strong in order to break free from that yoke from that karmic from that cord that was keeping you bound and stuck and when you did now you're on this whole new venture this journey card number two so this is you now using the discernment because that's the high priestess the number two in traditional tarot so it's like you've discovered something that was hidden that there was some disconnect that there was something completely wrong with this circumstance with this situation and that's when you started to assess not only yourself but you started to assess this person you started to assess their behavior you started to analyze in some instances like some of the things that they were doing how they was treating you and I feel what you decided to do was to leave entirely was to leave because you realize like okay love doesn't hurt love doesn't isn't confusing love doesn't lie love isn't something that's going to be you know um, you know back and forth love is supposed to be consistent you know and so I feel like that's when you finally made the decision to say okay it's time for me to go because I'm no longer going to to be someone's um, punching bag, you know. So this is what we what we we've come to. So this number two, this is a beautiful energy showing that you absolutely know your worth and value because you chose to walk away. This is a decision. This dual energy is you choosing yourself. That's the me, myself, and I. That's that energy. Okay, so. Let's go ahead. Let's proceed. We're going to get some messages from my deck. And then we're going to wrap it up. Okay. So let's see what we got. Actually, no, we're not. No, we're not. Oh, no, no, no. Yes, we are. I'm, my apologies. I'm confusing myself, y'all. And so we have um, Stevie Wonder here, Golden Lady. 
So you are now seen as a very golden, what did I say about that radiant energy? You know, these these cards that represent your energy, they're, they're yellow, they're gold. It's like very sunshiny. And remember, I was speaking of the sun, and then we have the sun that flew out. So this is beautiful energy. So let's see. Why is 77 spirituality and man holding a heart here for the overall energy for my beloved Scorpios? So it's very interesting, you know what I'm saying, for you all to trust what you're feeling because that high priestess, she knows what's hidden. She's very wise. You know what I'm saying? She is the keeper of ancient wisdom, you know? So in the streets, you know, you got to pay attention to whatever it is you're feeling from another person and never go against that. Don't go against that inner wisdom, that inner gumption. Cause like I said, in the streets, we call it vibes in religion. They call it spirit. And in science, we call it energy. You know what I'm saying? So all you got to do, you just got to trust it. Trust it. That might be the name of the reading. You got to trust what you're feeling. Don't give in to temptation. Don't let no devil confuse you and have you all stuck and tied up like this card. So look what we got here that flew out for 77 spirituality and man holding a heart. We have bright future, infinite supply, no need to worry, better days ahead, success, security, stability, and attracting all that you desire. What does that sound like? A blessing. Why are you receiving this blessing? Because you completed a karmic lesson. So this karmic that's been keeping you bound and stuck, you're freeing yourself from that person. And now this new love and this new financial blessing can work its way in. And this is why this person is very perturbed, very disturbed, very obsessed, very possessive, and very aggravated. They're aggy right now because you are moving on with your life. This person who thought they were smarter than they were, they thought that they were going to be able to dupe you for life. Like they thought they, were, you, they had you in a bag. You know what I'm saying? They thought they had you in the pocket. And, and it's like you have you've emerged someone completely different. And with Golden Lady, even if you're masculine, it's like this is how they see you. They see you radiating. They see you shining. They see you glowing. They see you winning. They see you as lucky. What did I say earlier? Like this person sees that you're lucky. Things always work out for you. And it's not like you didn't work for it. It's like you didn't just wake up like this. It's like you worked for that. You had to work from that. You had to heal from the ish they did. You also had to heal from past traumas that you may have been carrying around, which had you caught up in the rapture with this fool. You know what I'm saying? But it's like you did the work, which is why you're now being rewarded, which is why you're now being regarded as someone that is a spiritual, you know, being, you know, with the spirituality, someone who is a master teacher, someone who has healed themselves. Now you can heal. We got on the bottom of the deck. I'm sorry for pushing you away. I long for your smile, your conversation. You get me. And we're about to clarify the person that's praying on your downfall, domestic harmony and um, the second chakra. So now this is the sob story. You know, this is the this is the way that they tend to pull you in is they start to sound like they have some sense. They start to say things that sound like it, 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 it um, it's heartfelt when in actuality, this is just somebody trying to dupe you to get what they want. Because remember what I said about a narcissist, they don't for, they don't feel nothing. They are not sorry. They don't feel they did anything wrong, but they will say the words just to get what they want. And that's what this person is doing. They're starting to realize, you know, you are a golden lady. They do know and recognize that like, damn, you are rare fine, but it, it's not because They've had that epiphany like, dang, they did something wrong. They're just looking at it like, damn, you are real fine and they don't want nobody else to have you. They're not going to treat you any better than they treated you to begin with. Trust me when I tell you. So why is 46 domestic harmony second chakra here for the person that's praying for Scorpio's downfall? Remember, you the one that bring balance to them. And the first eye flew out. And what was I telling you the whole time? Use discernment. Trust your inner wisdom. You also had Archangel Uriel or Metatron, pardon me, show up the sixth chakra. So they're telling you use discernment when this person comes back singing them sob stories, telling you how, you know, terrible things are and all of the bad things they want you to feel sorry for them about. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, they the ones that did you dirty to begin with. 
So this says you have people who are in secret competitions, which you keep your business to yourself. I cannot make this up. This person is in a secret competition. And like I said, they will use words to dupe you, to play you, to have you feeling sorry. And then the moment you let your guard down, they're going to they're gonna play you for booba the fool. They're expecting you to be you know, that's still, you know, still be that compassionate and open hearted and caring person, which you are, but you're going to be that to the right folks this time around. So your, your community, your support system, your angels, your guides, your spirit team is on the case. And they telling you, they're giving you those warning shots. Like, look, use discernment because you got some folks that are in a secret competition just because they smiling don't mean they not beguiling. You know what I'm saying? Remember the song, smile in your face all the time. They want to take your play. Them backstabbers, backstabbers. And this is what this person is waiting for. The opportunity. Remember, you had the thinking man earlier. You know what I'm saying? And now we got the thinking woman. So you like 10 steps ahead of the game, beloved. So stay that way. Don't get, you know, duped. And so we have, um, what is this? Who is this? Tiana Taylor out of my league. So this person's not even in your league. They're not in your league. They feel you're out of their league because they definitely know you getting some sort of spiritual protection or guidance or something. So why is this 9-9 compassion and community here for how this person, Scorpio, that's hating on and praying on Scorpio's downfall feel? And we have it was all growing pains. And then we have turn that frown upside down. So this is what, you know, your angels and ancestors are telling you. You know, you're at a point in, 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 in your life where it's like you you are starting to realize like you had to go through it. Like you had to grow, excuse me, through this experience. You know, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Whatever isn't growing is dead. And this is the epiphany that I feel you had. But you was also, you know, trying to work on the connection, you know, trying to repair it, thinking that it was your job, your duty to repair or to restore this connection. But the divine is like reminding you, like, look, this was a growing pain, meaning this was an experience for you to grow from. A karmic relationship is often one for you to grow from, to learn from. And I feel like that's what you've learned. But when you learned that that's all it was, that it wasn't meant to be forever, it, it kind of made you sad because the divine is telling you, look, turn that frown upside down down because it gets better you know what I'm saying it gets better for you and we got strength coverage and wisdom here on the bottom of the deck so this is why the divine is saying like look it was a growing pain but look what look at all that you've been able to obtain throughout this circumstance you have strength now strength that you didn't have when you began this connection and you have courage to face whatever it is that comes your way and you also obtain the wisdom the wise dome from this experience and from this heartbreak so this is why the divine is like look turn that frown upside down there's nothing to be sad about there's nothing for you to fret over because you came out from of this situation on top you know what I'm saying? With that nine, like I said, that's the highest number of change. So you've ascended. You are now, you know, very much a, a, a spiritual, um, you know, you're very spiritual. You're you're spiritually strong, spiritually aligned, you know, connected to source. So why is this three creativity and um, 23 all tied up? So it says you left me in my darkest times. That betrayal was unbearable. And what did I say? This is somebody who feels like you abandoned them. But this is all mind uckery because remember the 23 and all tied up. This is what they may communicate to you because you're not opening up and being someone's punching bag all over again or their dumping grounds. Now they're going to try to reverse psychology and have you feeling guilty for protecting yourself, your space, your energy, your time. And now they want to sit here and play the blame game and say, you know, that betrayal, you know, you're not opening up to me because now you have healthy boundaries. Now they want to make you feel guilty. But. You're an empress, an emperor. You, you, you're not falling for the okie doke. You know what you did was for your betterment. You knew that you did what you had to do, um, so that you can maintain your own, um, mental health and happiness and joy. But this person is going to sit here and try because this is what's hidden is they're trying to conjure up some plan to have you feeling guilty. They're trying to guilt trip you and trying to have you feeling like you did something wrong. When in actuality, this is just a ploy to get you to put your defenses down and um, you can't fall for the okie doke. So what did I say? Somebody's definitely watching you because we got watching me, watching me, watching me, watching me, watching me, watching me, watching me. Oh, <laughs> this is what's on the bottom of the deck. This is an ode to a song that Jill Scott 
um, saying, um, so this person is definitely watching you, definitely keeping tabs, but not only is this person watching you, remember I said you got a couple of suitors here, so I feel like that secret admirer, that person that I feel is watching you from a distance, they're watching you, they're trying to strategize some way to come in, or, you know, the right timing, I feel like they're trying to time, you know, you know, time it so that it can, it can, um, work out in your favor, and we have, um, we got Mary J. Blige round and round. So yeah, so you got two two different people coming in. One person had you on some emotional roller coaster ride or had you going around and around in circles, playing a lot of games, you know, had you in some sort of karmic cycle, but you've since completed. And then you have another love option that is going to bring joy and happiness and love and care into the equation for you. And they're going to make the effort. Whereas the other person is going to front like they're going to make the effort. And then the moment you accept them back, they're going to play games so don't fall for the okie doke remember the thinking woman is here so that's just speaking to you being able to see through the illusions and see you know all of the red flags beforehand so why is this 13 effort eight indecision the sun and the thinking woman here for what's hidden in the energy for my beloved scorpios thank you spirit and we have the divine sends love and light so this is beautiful because the sun came out under this card as well you know the sun is here as well and then the divine sends love and light so this is a gift a gift just as i said from the divine a blessing from the divine this new beginning the sun represents like i said a wish fulfillment um a stroke of luck happiness joy this is you finding alignment i feel like everything is coming full circle i feel like there's some sort of movement whatever was delayed is being um you know being um unblocked you know whatever was delaying a situation is being removed i should say but i feel like there's growth there's elevation there's and you know this it's like you intuitively know <clears throat> my throat is getting blocked you may have someone um reaching out and communicating to you that you hadn't heard from in a while and i feel like and then you have somebody look at this and then you have someone else <laughs> look at this we're about to clarify the nine completion the attachment and journey and guess what's on the bottom of the deck it says keep it moving they ain't about shit so that's what you're going to do you're reflecting because this nine attachment she's looking at the mask that was placed on her face and then she decides to you know assess it she's like assessing this mask analyzing the mask analyzing you know this thing has that has been covering her covering her her face for you know, probably nine years you know maybe seven but it's been covering her face for so long that she's like analyzing it and realizing like damn I was I was duping myself I was this is self-sabotage this is like I've been you know I've been deceiving myself I've been playing myself and then she proceeds to you know acknowledging that she's bound to something as well so she's like in prison, but by her own thoughts, by her own perspective. And I feel like that's what frees her up. But it's because she was allowing someone to to dupe her, to mind fuck and gaslight and, and um, manipulate. And when she stops looking for that person to, um, shall I say, validate, that's when she tends to free herself, but she's going to keep it moving. And that's why this journey card is here because she decides to, to keep it moving. She does exactly what the divine says. So why is this completion attachment and journey here? Thank you. Spit. Dang. They gave you 45 billion cards, son. <laughs> we got, I've got played for boo boo the fool. Didn't I tell y'all this person got played? The player got played. And then they trying to come and cry in your goddamn arms over somebody they done dissed you for. The audacity. And we got be your girl. So we got ritual work. Rejection is for your protection. Take your power back now. Toxic behavior. Your biggest fans are those up seething at your ascension. Do not settle for less. Clean, clear, cleanse. I don't do well with people who are detached from their emotions. I feel all of this is very fitting and I'm keeping every last one of these cards because this all explains what you all went through with this completion and the attachments this is you analyzing your whole situation this is you realizing like damn I gotta I gotta detach from this I don't do well with people who are detached from their emotions so this person was very emotionless they was definitely a uh, egotistical very you know superficial type of person somebody that didn't really 
emote, didn't allow themselves to be vulnerable. The divine is telling you, look, you don't have to settle because what's in what's ahead of you, what's in the future is so much better than what you could ever even imagine. And then this person, like I said, with your biggest fans are those up seething at your ascension. So this is like the person that's like, spying on you that that secret hater that's sitting there pretending smiling and beguiling acting like they're happy for you but they're really like upset and pissed off that you're winning that you're thriving that you're successful that you was able to survive whatever attacks that they was sending your way this is someone who's very toxic and they're still in their toxicity which is why the divine ha opened up the reading speaking of narcissism i wasn't even i don't i don't even open up a reading talking about stuff like that so I knew that that was like in spirit was telling me it was heavy on my heart and would take your power back now that's what this journey is about you making a decision to move in the opposite direction of this person and the divine is reminding you like look rejection is for your protection be thankful you was able to you know walk away from this situation wiser you know, remember you had strength, courage, and wisdom. So you grew from this experience personally, spiritually, emotionally, you grew, you learned to love yourself. And we got ritual work here. So somebody could be dealing with someone that has some sort of root work on them, spell work. Somebody could have did a love spell on your ex, on your karmic. And that's why they're so confused. That's why they're so mental. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot going on mentally with this person. I feel a lot is, is, um, you know, being, being brought uh, to the forefront in these readings because some of these individuals just, you know, somebody that's thinking about you all the time, that's not healthy. You know what I'm saying? I know it sounds good when you like wanting to hear that somebody's thinking about you, but to, to in, like, even when I'm like on YouTube, a lot of the videos, is, it, it, it says the same thing. And I don't watch other people's videos no more. Like I made, you know, one or two, three here and there because I don't want other people's messages to you know kind of cloud my own vision it's just like somebody who creates music they're not going to listen to other artists to get in you know to get inspired because what that does is that waters down their sound they start sounding like the other person and i don't want to sound like anybody else i like sounding like you you know and that's no diss to anybody else i love there there's a lot of other readings i like other readers out there i love my lady scorpius i love my robin's realm i love you know um certain individuals um seven tarot i like him he's an englishman and um i like the way he reads because it's different from everybody else i don't i, I just like different stuff <laughs> i don't you know everybody's stuff just starts getting blurred and, and becomes redundant so um i just like when people put a different spin on it and what i love about robin's realm is she always gives you a little sound therapy you know before her readings and she just has a very calm and very loving very nurturing um voice as does lady scorpius so i listen to people that i i feel like i can learn from as well you know what i'm saying but um definitely um don't fall for the okie doke when this narcissist comes back because they're trying to get you to settle for their love according to um patrice russian so this is somebody that doesn't have anything to offer, but they just want you to settle. And remember, the message said here, clear as day, and I'm going to show you, do not settle for less. And we got Patrice Russian telling you somebody wants you to settle for their love. I can't make this ish up. And I just want to show you because you know me. I like to show and prove, baby. You know, I like to show and prove. So this is what is playing right now. Settle for my love. And let me show you the actual card that flew out. And it says, do not settle for less. Okay. So please take heed, my beloved Scorpios. I will that this message resonated with you all. Definitely protect your energy from an ex, from a karmic, from whomever, family member, frenemy, whomever. Do not just accept anybody back because they singing them same old sob stories they've been singing. Protect your energy and love you more. I keep hearing love you more. This person's only coming back because they have no one else to run to. This person got played terribly. But this is also the same person that played y'all terribly. So it's just like the audacity of someone that played you, uh, you know, for them to come crying and crawling back to you about somebody that did them dirty. So just be mindful, protect your energy. I love you all. Thank you so much for tuning and tapping in. I hope the message is resonated. If it did, please be kind, hit the like, the share, the subscribe button, and definitely hit the bell notification so you know whenever I upload. Until next time, I send a big fat old. Ashe. Love you all. Peace, love, and light.